this app connect enterprise use different protocols and message you know message format so that you can integrate with different applications which are available there right uh, that is nothing but it's called as an ibm app connect enterprise okay and so on so we'll be discussing about you know about you know uh, this uh, ibm app connect enterprise okay uh, and so on so right okay so so what happened here is is this uh, particular software uh, uh, no combine your you know industry you know uh, uh, different uh, different industry technologies which are available there okay so this uh, okay uh, technologies of ibm integration bus with your ibm app connect professional and also with your cloud native technologies that is nothing but is called as your ibm app connect enterprise so when you are talking about app connect enterprise it helps you to combine your existing and also other types of industry you know technologies okay of your ibm integration bus okay ibm integration bus okay and then ibm app connect professionals professional okay and also with your cloud native technologies so that is nothing but is your uh, okay it's nothing but it's called has your ibm app connect enterprise ibm app connect enterprise which is available okay and so so this will help you to deliver your integration solution okay uh, okay for your modern digital as okay, a enterprise which is available there so that is nothing but it's called as a ibm app connect enterprise and so on yeah right. so these are some of the use cases of ibm app connect integra uh, integration right so there are six common client use cases which are available there right sas saas integration 360 degree client review view automated automate task back office integration move to cloud and omni channel so these are the you know six uh, what you call as common client use cases which are available there. okay and so on so uh, okay so you can make use of these you know uh, use cases okay to you know create your application in your ibm integration you know uh, bus okay and so on so right uh, this ibm you know uh, helps this particular you know uh, i you know ibm helps you to adopt your saas solutions right sas solutions okay provide your saas integration where you are able to integrate with your you no know, sales force you know work day or service now etc it can be integrated into it okay and so on so which means that you can replace your existing legacy or any other home ground solutions or you can create a new function with all your existing enterprise okay solutions which are available there so that is what your you know as saas integration will help you to do okay and so on so okay and so on so it helps you to provide you uh, know enable efforts uh, no cloud integration with all your smart integration which is a smart connectors which is available so that is nothing but it's called as a you no know, saas integration then comes your 360 degree client view okay now when you are talking about clients you no know, the clients are more aware of your data uh, okay and also you no know, uh, uh, are also they are also more you no know, aware of your you no know, data and also insight driven okay data which are available there right so uh, so that you you are able to continuously improve okay uh, uh, the business outcomes which are available there so these clients are more uh, no uh, no more data and insight driven okay they are okay so they are able to continuously improve your you know uh, business outcomes which are available there okay and so on so in order to continuously improve your business outcome this requires real time access to your customer data right so this customer data is stored across your several application systems okay which are available there okay now this ibm app connect will help you to uh, you know break this boundary by accessing it accessing the data collecting the data and distributing this information as and when it is needed okay and so on so which will help you to you know uh, allow you to create okay uh, you know uh, real time customer dashboards okay Uh, with all the relevant and accurate informations which are available okay which are available on demand so that is nothing but is called as a you know 360 degree client view which is available then the third use cases is about your automated tasks okay so in your integration technologies okay will help you to automate your manual repetitive tasks okay and so on so that you know the your team okay or the other users can focus on core responsibility okay and deliver your customer requirements which is available there okay and so on okay so that is okay so that is nothing okay uh, so that is nothing but is your automate your task so you are able to automate the repetitive you no know, task manual uh, automate your manual repetitive task okay so that the team can focus on the core responsibility 
and uh, now deliver your customer requirements much faster that is nothing but is called as that is your automate your task then comes your you know fourth use case that is back office integration okay so right uh, uh, that is your fourth use cases right okay where you are able to you know uh, 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 service across to the back end core business assets and systems which are available there okay and so on okay and so on so uh, uh, the fourth use cases is okay where is you one where okay your ability to scale your demand has has your business growth okay and so on so right so uh, okay so it will help you to accelerate your business which is available there so that is nothing but is called as a back of office integration then fifth one is nothing but your move to cloud okay so has you has the client or customers want to move to cloud okay uh, right so they are uh, you know they are trying to adopt uh, okay saas solutions and also trying to migrate their application okay and data onto the cloud infrastructure which are available there okay and so on right and also the clients wants to run their integration close to your data okay or you know closer to where your data resides which is available there okay and so on so this ibm app connect will fulfill okay uh, now fulfills this particular you know uh, use case okay uh, now provide okay based on the business requirements which is available there. so it will help you to move or uh, move your you no know, uh, integration onto the cloud okay uh, which is uh, when the cloud okay and so on when your cloud is ready and so on right so uh, right so this move can happen okay uh, and then you can you no know, uh, run your integrations as part of your you no know, cloud native architecture which is available there okay and so on so this is this can also be done with the help of your uh, what is called as your uh, no uh, uh, ibm integration uh, I, 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 ibm app connect enterprise which is available there okay and so on then the last one is nothing but is your omni channel okay right so uh, you can you no know, create some client experience when you play okay with the help of your apis and the events which are generated with the product so that is nothing but is your okay create your omni channels okay and so on so that is what it will help you to create so these are you no know, some of the you know uh, right uh, use cases which are available there okay okay so when you are talking about app connect you know enterprise okay uh, right so this is the uh, best integration solution which is available in your market right so this will help you to you know uh, you know deliver all the you know integration use cases which we had just you know at discussed upon okay so right uh, right uh, so that is what your you know uh, your integration will help you to do right so this integration solution will help you to provide connectivity to various uh, applications okay will help you to provide data and information exchange between these applications on demand okay and so on so when you are talking about this application in, in, in integration there are you no know, many vendors are available in the market okay and so on right so but your ipm app connect enterprise provides a full you no know, uh, 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 integration solution okay uh, with you no know, with a lots of you uh, know uh, demanding workloads which uh, which supports lot of demanding workloads okay and also it is ready for the future needs that is what it sets apart from all the other types of integration solutions which are available in the uh, in the market which is available okay and so on right so the first and the foremost thing you are able to connect to different solutions which are available different applications you are able to connect to it you are able to share your okay exchange your data and information okay and so on all these things are available there so which means that no this ibm app connect enterprise contains lots of pre built smart connect connectors which will help you to integrate the data build api okay and also act on an events which are available there okay so so that is what that is what your you know app connect uh, connect will help you to do the next one is nothing but is your transform okay uh, right so this ibm app connects you uh, know Uh, you know provides data transformation and data mapping engines okay that will help you to virtually transform any data to any format okay uh, by the end applications which are available there so it will help you to transform to any data okay uh, any format okay it transform any data to any format okay by your end application which is available there okay and so on. so that is what your ibm app connect can perform this app okay and so on so this app connect comes with your embedded ai and machine learning features that will help you to offer some intelligent recommendations okay so that no 
uh, right you can you know uh, help reduce your learning you know learning outcomes okay and then you can accelerate the uh, accelerate your product timeline which is available there. so that is nothing but it's called as a transform then comes your test okay so right ibm app connect offers native test suits which are available there so that you no know, the developer can validate the integration configurations okay uh, on which you are working on which you are working okay in real time okay in real time uh, you can you know validate your integration solutions which are available or integration configurations which are available there, okay and so on so the clients can quickly iterate through various configurations okay or throughout the development life cycles okay uh, it can be done okay so clients can quickly iterate right and so on so and also no uh, uh, app connect also supports variety okay uh, uh, no or other native test unit test framework which are available there. you need uh, no unit test framework you can make use of this unit test in order to you no know, uh you no know, validate your integration configurations which are available there. okay so the developers can write their uh, uh, no uh, write their unit test okay uh, uh, along when you are developing your uh, new integration component when you are developing a new integration component you can write your unit test okay and so on and then validate that particular configuration which is available there, right so this will help you to uh, deliver no uh, your integration at at a, at a very high speed okay at a very high speed which is available okay then the fourth one is nothing but is your operator operate okay, okay and so on so uh, you can deploy your integration you know as simple as a uh, as an integration process okay and so on so right uh, you can you no know, you can deploy as microservices or you can deploy or okay, deploy as an esd okay you know with a single dashboard view across all your deployments on premise core you know cloud multi cloud and hybrid which is available so all those things can be done okay and so on so this is what your iapp connect integration will help you to uh, provide it okay you can connect transform test and operate you can connect you know transform test and operate okay your integration solutions which are available so deploy your integration solutions where your data resides okay and so on so okay uh, so it uh, no your ibm offers no uh, uh, different types of deployment of play of you know options which are available there okay so where you can deploy it on your virtual machines you can deploy it on your containers you can deploy it on your kubernetes hybrid or multi cloud okay has per your clients need has per your clients need which is available there okay and so on okay so right okay and so on so you can deploy it in ibm cloud pack for integration using your ibm app connect and ibm app connect on cloud which is available right so uh, right so this ibm app connect cloud pack for integration is a single unified platform okay uh, which will help you to provide your deployment architecture of your integration capabilities deployment architecture of your integration capabilities which are available there so within this particular unified platform single unified platform you have your api management capability messaging capability event stream capability and your data file transfer capability which are available there and this is deployed on top of your red hat open shift okay which is available there. okay and so on then comes your app connect okay this app connect can okay uh, you can can also run on containers okay you can you no know, deploy it as a standalone or on premises on okay or you can deploy it on any cloud or you can deploy it on your uh, uh, open shift or kubernetes docker or any virtual machine which means that you can deploy your app connect on your virtual machine and also on to your uh, container platform or any kubernetes platform which is available there right and also okay uh, on to your cloud like amazon azure google cloud providers which is available there okay and so on so you have you no know, in on in ibm you have a ibm managed service option is available only on ibm cloud okay and so on so okay and so on. so right so that is also provided with your ibm app connect then comes your ibm app connect on cloud so this is you no know, this provides you with you no know, multi tenant service which is fully managed maintained and operated by your ibm team so ibm team can provide you with the you know uh, provide you with your you uh, know Uh, what is called as uh, managed services which is available there uh, okay and it uh, no and you it it is highly available okay it, it provides you multi tenant service 
okay and so on and it is fully managed by and maintained and operated by i so these are the uh, different de you know deployment options which your I ibm provides but through which you will be able to deploy your ibm app connect enterprise ibm app connect enterprise which is available okay as well okay so when you are talking about this agile integration okay we can view this application integration perspective on these you no know, uh, concepts which are available there okay so you no know, you can break up the you know esb pattern that is centralized esb pattern into discrete integrations which are available there okay and so on so these are the three aspects of agile integration decentralized ownership delivery led architecture and cloud and a you know, cloud native infrastructure which is available there okay and so on right so uh, okay so this uh, de decentralized in inter integration okay all right so this will help your uh, application teams you no know, choose you no know, can choose to own and you know, and implement their own their own integrations which are available there that is decentralized integration then we have this delivery led architecture okay where integration can be de deployed in fine grained you know Uh, uh through automated pipelines which will help you to enable your continuous integration and continuous de delivery and continuous deployment okay so right and so on right uh, that is nothing but is called as the delivery led architecture next comes your cloud native infrastructure where you no know, you can no uh, your integrations are provided has images to a container orchestration platform no which will help you to no you no know, standardize standardize the deployment okay administration scalability portability all these things can be provided with the help of your and uh, cloud native infrastructure so this cloud native infrastructure will help you to provide you with the uh, what it called as uh, your operational agility improve your operational agility delivery that in, in architecture will help you to improve your deployment agility decentralized ownership will help you to improve your uh, uh, development agility which is available okay and so on right so uh, when you're talking about the deployment on containers okay uh, right so why it's more powerful when you deploy you when you deploy your app app connect on the containers and so on okay so uh, it, okay so this you no know, this will help you to you no know, uh, it has rapid startup okay uh, dependency free okay uh, okay and so on so that is what your uh, lightweight run times will help you to provide so lightweight run times is nothing but will help you okay it will help you to provide rapid startup dependency free file system installation configuration and deployment which is are available there. okay so these are some of the key in, uh, you know uh, characteristics okay uh, which are uh, okay uh, available with your integration run time with your uh, uh, with your uh, no uh, with your uh, uh, ibm app connect enterprise right so now what happens here is you uh, uh, using this you know, when your application runs on your container okay uh, you can create okay you can perform deployments right Uh, right you can create resilient topologies it helps you to provide no self heal help, okay and also you can scale elastically which is available there okay so in order to provide all these things okay your run times must be lightweight okay your run times must be lightweight which is available there okay ideally okay ideally must be a single process okay okay uh, running across your integration bus so that is the need so it helps you to provide rapid startup okay and it helps you to provide your rapid startup which is available there so run times are a single process that runs in your container okay and so on so runs in a container okay so which means that they can be started and stopped in seconds they can be started and stopped in seconds and also you can easily administer administer okay administer this run times which are available there okay and so on so how you can administer you by using your orchestration frameworks okay orchestration framework so your orchestration frameworks are provided by the kubernetes or red hat openshift which is available there then comes your dependency free okay it is dependency free which means that the run times no longer have hard dependency on your database or any other message queues okay so that no you need to install alongside your you no know, run times which are available there okay uh, okay and so on although if that particular dependency is needed it can adapt okay and connect to them and then the run your integration solutions which are available there okay so it is not compulsory that you need to run your in, okay uh, run your you no know, run times with the dependency on database or message queues which are available there. okay then file installation 
configuration and deployment okay the runtimes can be you no know, uh, installed and you no know, configured okay by using either by using your configuration files okay on a file system okay or the binary files okay on a file system and then you can start okay and so on okay uh, okay and so on so uh, now when you're talking about this app connect enterprise there is no need to deploy your uh, integration uh, to a live running integration server okay uh, no okay integration server which is available there okay and so on right uh, uh, right and so on Right, so that is what okay is available. Right, so the file system installation configuration is also much simpler. Uh, right, okay, and so on. So runtimes can be installed and configured. So you're using your you no know, configuration files which is available there. Right, when you're installing your IBM App Connect enterprise, okay, and so on. And these types are ideal for automated pipelines which are available there. Okay, and so on. Okay, and so this situation is ideal for you no know, uh, Docker images and the automated pipelines. That will help you to essentially provide you with your CI CD, okay, continuous integration and continuous pipeline which is available, there, okay, and so on. So that is what your, you know, your uh, no, uh, IBM integration, you no, know, uh, uh, lightweight, lightweight runtime is all about, okay, and so on. Okay, so these are the different different deployment options which is available there. Okay, and so on, which is already seen it. We have this container based installation, then we have operating operating system installation, and then we have the managed service on cloud. Okay, when you are talking about container based installation, we are talking about IBM Cloud Pack for integration. Okay, so this is a single unified platform which will help you to install your IBM app connected with there. Okay. Or you can install on Red Hat, OpenShift, or any other container platforms like Kubernetes, or you can have your Docker images, okay, and so on. Then you can also install, okay, on your operating systems, okay. Operating system is also okay possible. And then we have your managed service on cloud. You have this managed service on cloud which is available, there, okay, and so on. So that can also be a provider which is available, there, okay, and so on. So that is these these are the, you know, a different, you know, uh, these are the different, okay. Uh, okay, uh, no uh, deployment options which are available. There. Okay, right. So this integration is persona centric tools which is available there. So we have different tools are available there. Okay, within your IBM integration bus, so that you no know, you can make use of these tools in order to develop your applications which are available there. So you have a designer tool. Okay, and you also you have a toolkit which is available there. Okay, and so on. Right. Uh, so uh, okay, so these are no, uh, uh, right. Okay, tools. So these tools are you know uh, are skill specific integration tools which are development tools which are available. The skill specific. Okay, and so on. So we have your App Connect Designer. Okay. Uh, so this App Connect Designer is nothing but it's a browser based integration development tool set. Okay, and uh, okay, and so on. So uh, right. Uh, uh, okay. So that you will be able to enable you no know, integrators, okay, uh, even uh, uh, you know ad hoc developers, integration developers, so that you can build your powerful integration with you no know, little or no training. So no training is needed in order to build up your uh, build up this integration solution using your you no know, you know, designers which are available. There. Okay. So this IBM App Connect designer leverages your AI and machine learning technologies. Okay, AI and machine learning technologies which is available. There, okay, uh, right. So with with some you know guided experiences. Okay, which will help you to uh, simplify the, how the you know developers understand and build your integration solution. Okay, using no code and low code. Okay, using no code and a low code which is available. So you can just drag and drop your workflows. Okay, and then create your integration solutions which are available there. So that is nothing but is your designer which is available there. Okay, and so on. So there are hundreds of pre-built smart collectors, uh, connectors are available there, templates are available there that will help you to build REST APIs, okay, uh, and also that will help you to build event-driven, you know, uh, integration, like, okay, and so on. Okay, all those things can be done with the help of your designers which are available there. Okay, so there are hundreds of smart connectors are available there. These smart connectors are you know, built by IBM and provided by IBM. So when you have a license to use your IBM smart connectors, which means that uh, IBM, you no know, IBM, okay, these, 
okay so these will automatically be, will provide uh, okay so this will automatically provide you with your smart connectors which are available there so the license of your okay uh, of your ibm cloud pack integration okay uh, uh, will automatically provide you with your smart connectors which are available there so IBM you know, drastically builds your smart connectors, maintains your smart connectors which are available there. Okay. And these smart connectors now are security enabled, or security enabled which is available there. Okay. And so on. So that is nothing but your IBM smart connectors which are available there. Then we have IBM App Connect Enterprise which are there. IBM App Connect Enterprise. So this IBM App Connect Enterprise is a you know, toolkit. Okay. Is a IBM's you no. Know, uh, most powerful and advanced integration development uh, tooling okay and this tool is you know, meant for experts integration experts and integration specialist which is available there okay so this toolkit is based on on your eclipse id okay and you can you know developers can develop multi style integration like you can develop api rest api services pubsub synchronize and asynchronized processing Okay, event integration, event processing, etc., etc. Okay, and also there are you know, many other patterns are available which can be you know developed using your you know toolkit which are available there. Okay, okay, and so on. So uh, and the, this toolkit also you know uh, you okay and uh, no this uh, okay so how okay users can develop okay your uh, uh, solutions by you know drag and drop your pre pre built components which are available there. Okay. Or you can develop by writing the code, writing the code with which supports you no know, supports some you no know, programming languages which are available like C plus plus dot net and Java. You can make use of these you know languages in order to develop your integration you no know, uh, you no know, uh, solutions which are available. There. Okay, and so and also you no know, this toolkit helps you to provide different tutorial, building tutorials, guides, examples, uh, patterns. Okay, all those things are available. There. So you can make use of this toolkit. Okay. And then, you know, develop your integration solutions which are available. There. So these two toolkits are integrated. Okay, persona sensors. Okay, it depends. Okay, so we have a designer, which where okay, any you know, any you know, it is based on your no code, low code solutions. Okay, and you know, it uh, anyone can develop your uh, uh, flows in, or solution within this designer. Itself. Okay, if he doesn't, even if he doesn't have any experience in. Developing your integration solutions, but toolkit offers more advanced and more powerful uh, for uh, okay, uh, features uh, which can be used by uh, you know, experts, right? Uh, you know, experts or uh, integration solution experts, okay, who are available there. So that is nothing but is your you know, tools. These are the two tools where you can you know, create. Okay, the next uh, okay, yeah. right? So you have your smart connectors. Okay, you have the smart connectors which are available there. Okay, and so so now. Uh, So these smart connectors, okay, uh, uh, offer okay help you to provide you no know, uh, you no know, easier way to you know, create your uh, flows within your uh, no, IBM uh, no, uh, App Connect Enterprise. Resource. So this is a web based you okay uh, uh, web based uh, what do you call as a um, tool okay uh, where you uh, uh, within that you have all your smart connectors which are available there, okay and so on. Okay, so what does it helps you to provide? It provides perform metadata discovery. It helps you to manage your security, manage session, consistent behavior and user experience. Okay, it helps you to provide okay, okay enhanced actions, event support, built-in error handling. Okay, all these things are you know, are provided with the help of, with with your smart connectors which are available. There, okay, and so on, right? So uh, uh, okay, and so on. So uh, right. So these IBM offers uh, okay your connectors. For most of the popular application from Vendor, such as your Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, etc., etc., which are available there. Okay, and so on, right? So, right, so all the smart connectors are provided by uh, uh, IBM. So, uh, right, so unlike other vendors, okay, all the connectors are offered by IBM, okay, which means that they are developed, managed, and supported by and uh, okay, IBM, and the clients are entitled to use those smart connectors, okay. 
uh, under the IBM App Connect product license, okay, without any additional fees which are available, okay, and so on. So, these smart connectors are smart and intelligent connectors, okay, and so on, uh, right, so that you can make use of these smart connectors in order to, you know, uh, uh, create your integration solutions which are available, okay, and so on. So, these smart connectors will help you to, you know, remove the need to understand an application's endpoint, okay, and so on. So, right, and so on. So, so which means that the user need not, you know, refer to application documentation, okay, you know, in order to build your, build into the, in order to build your application using your connectors which are available, okay, and so on, right. So, the smart connectors, okay, knows about your available interface, okay, so knows about your available interface so that it can secure, you know, it can securely authenticate, authorize, okay, uh, against an uh, you know, uh, application, an enterprise application which is available. There. So that can also be uh, not provided. And it also provides you with the, you know, uh, no, uh, performance, uh, security performance and quality of services which is available. There. So that is nothing but is your, you know, smart connectors which are available. There. So these are all the, uh, no, uh, no, uh, your, uh, these are all your, uh, no, uh, your uh, features, your uh, uh, your connectors will help you to provide. So it has built-in error handling. Okay, all these things, right? So yesterday you would have you not know, done this particular exercise on smart connectors, and so on, right? So so designer is a no code environment, no code, low code environment which is available there. So you can create your APIs, okay, uh, uh, right, uh, right. So you can create your you no know, uh, API. Even even data integration can be created, okay. Uh, you can you know you can design your flows with smart connectors okay and you can know with pre-discovered events and apis okay so you can also use your logic blocks business logic box to build your intelligent workflows okay and so on. all these things are available there okay so there are hundreds of templates and examples are available there so you can make use of this okay uh, in order to you know uh, avoid any learning flow in creating your business applications which are available there okay and so on. so you have your smart mappers are available there Okay, uh, right. Uh, okay, uh, so which will help you to you uh, know uh, uh, okay uh, map okay uh, map your task okay map your task which are available for creating your integration solutions right. So these are your AI powered mapping mapping which is available there okay and so on. So uh, which will help you to simplify the creation of integration solutions which is available. There. Okay, and so on. Okay, so let's say for example, if you uh, know, uh, if your users, you know, most of the integration developers, right, are familiar with data transformation and mapping. Okay, and uh, how this data transformation and mapping is important to your uh, integration solution, right, and so on. So for users who are not, okay, then you no, know, this data transformation and mapping is a complex, no, uh, no complex task. Okay, so that you know, in order to create your, you know, integration solutions which are available. There, okay, and so on. Right. So this, you know, uh, IBM App Connect, you no, know, um, uh, offers you, uh, okay, uh, user experiences which, you know, which has no code and AI ML technologies to simplify this particular complex task which are available there. Okay. So it is just like a spreadsheet like UI with uh, hundreds of pre-built functions based on JSON data which is available. There. Okay. So which will help you to easily transform the data. Uh, from JSON, XML, flat files, etc., to any other format which are available there. Okay, and this is an AI powered, AI ML powered mapping suggestions and transformation logic which are available there. Okay, and so on. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, uh, and also offers your inline guidance and recommendation. So if you want to solve some you know, complex use cases which are available there, right? Okay, and so on, right? So that okay, uh, uh, right? So that that is what it will help you to help you to provide. So, so developer can also apply your string manipulation, mathematical operations, other functions, so that you no, know, you can transform the data. Data has and when needed is available. There, okay, and so on, right? Right. So this intelligent mapper, okay, the smart mapper, okay, it will help you to mediate and transform the incoming data into desired format. By the target, okay, uh, right, and so on. Without the target, which is available, target for, for the target data, which is available, okay, and so on. So this app connect enterprise leverages your artificial intelligence and machine learning technology, so that now uh, it will help you to accelerate your mapping and 
a transformation task which is available there. So what it employs? It employs your natural NLP, natural language processing, okay, and other, you know, other algorithm that will help you to analyze the uh, data from the smart connectors, okay, and then offer mapping suggestions which are available there, okay, and so on, okay, uh, okay, and so on. So, uh, okay, that can that can be done by your uh, smart network, okay, and so on. And it also learns from the user's behavior. Based on the user's behavior, okay, uh, right, it uh, it offers customs, custom and person personalized suggestions, okay, uh, based on their use cases, based on their use cases. It provides you the suggestions that also can be done, okay, and so on. So, that is nothing but is your uh, smart mappers which are available there, okay, and so on. Then we have your data driven development, which is available there. Okay. So it will help you to validate the created integration flow, right? And so on. So that is what it will help you to do. Okay. So, uh, so this app connect designer you know, allows developers to test the components using your designer user interface, which is available. There. So you have your, you know, from there, sir, you can test the interface which is available. So you can test the interface and test, okay, and validate the flow which is available there, okay, and so on. Within the within this particular tool, you can check it. So, so this can so this will help you to test, validate, update, test, and repeat the process again and again. It is available there, okay. All those things can be done with the help of this data, you know, driven you know, development which is available there, okay, and so on, okay. So that is nothing but is your uh, okay uh, your data driven development which is available okay and so on okay now so when you're talking about this deployment of bar files okay so you can deploy your bar files in either of this better method which is available okay so app connect dashboard okay or advanced level is nothing but bar you using your bar url you need available, okay and so on right so in order to you know, deploy this you can make use of this okay uh, Okay, so using your content server, or you can make use of your you know, bar URL which is available. There. You can union specific the bar file is created. You can you know right you know, uh, you can provide or you uh, uh, don't so don't upload anything right. Don't upload anything uh, okay when you uh, after creating it when you don't upload anything and go to the next file at the last step okay it will ask you to provide you the URL. So you need to specify the URL okay from here bar multiple bar files can be deployed onto. Onto the uh, onto it, which is available there. Okay, and so on. So that is one way. Okay, and uh, doing right. So uh, uh, okay, and so on. When you're talking about uh, integration servers, okay, when you're talking about this integration servers, the integration servers requires two types of resources. Okay, so when you want to provide the bar files to an integration servers, okay, integration requires two types of resources, which is available there. One is nothing but it requires a bar files. Okay. It requires a bar files which is available there, okay, and uh, okay, and so on, right? So the bar files, okay, which contains your development resources and your configuration files, so for setting up the integration services which are available there, okay, and so on. So you need to, you know, you, you uh, okay, and so on. You need to specify this, okay. You need to say, okay, specify these resources which are available there. So the bar file contains what are the resources? It contains the Development resources, it contains your development resources and also it contains your configuration resources which are available. Okay, and so on. So that is your configuration file. So, what is the configuration files? Okay, so, so these development resources and configuration files are ne necessary for setting up your integration servers. Okay, and so on. So, when you create your integration server, you are required to specify one or more bar files that contains your development resources. Okay, uh, uh, okay, of your I, uh, okay of the IBM App Connect designer or the IBM App Connect enterprise you know toolkit okay and so integration that you want to deploy okay and so right so there are number of mechanisms are available there for providing these bar files into your integration server you no know, integration server right so you can choose the mechanism that meet your uh, requirements which are available there. So there are different mechanisms are available so that you, you you want to provide the bar files into it. So all those things are available there. So the first and the first mechanism is nothing but is your okay. The first mechanism is nothing but is your content server. Okay, so content server. Okay, and so on. Right. 
so right so you can make use of this ibm app connect dashboard so that you are you can you know upload and import your bar files for deployment into your integration servers okay and so on so when you upload or you, you know import your bar files into your integration server the what happens is the bar files are stored in a content server okay that is associated with your ibm app connect dashboard instance ibm app connect dashboard instance which is available there okay and so on right so when this content server is created this content server is created as a container as a container in the app connect dashboard deployment okay and okay and so on app connect dashboard deployment so when you deploy your app connect dashboard this idea this content server is created as a container which is available there okay and so on so okay so this container can uh, this particular content server can be used to to store upload okay that is store okay or import your bar files okay into your containers file system okay you are importing it into your containers file system which is available there okay and so on okay uh, okay and so on so when you import it into your containers file system okay so the location okay when it is imported the location of your bar file will be you know uh, will be generated okay as a bar url okay the location will be generated as a bar url which is available okay and so on and it is uploaded into it okay and so on okay right so it is available there okay and so on so that is uh, that is what is all about your okay uh, right uh, right your uh, uh, your content server okay so either you can make use of the content server which is available there okay and so on so when you are when you are using your content server in order to deploy your bar file you can choose only one bar file to deploy from the content server okay and then you must reference its bar url in the content server you must reference its bar url in the content server which is available there okay so what is the integration server does now is the integration server then uses this bar url to download the bar file okay uh, okay uh, on, on startup and process the application okay and process the application which is available there okay and so on so this bar url is specified on uh, okay using this bar url field okay or it can be specified using specification dot okay bar url okay we can specify okay and so on, right so that is all so uh, this uh, uh, using this content server you can choose only one bar file to deploy it from a content a server and must reference its bar bar url in the content server which is available there okay and so on right so that can be done so typically what will happen is the location of the bar file in the content server is is available in the following okay what is called like in the following uh, url tag so this will how your you know it will be available there okay and so on okay so it will be just https colon double slash and the dashboard url Okay, dashboard uh, no? name. Okay, uh, dashboard name. Okay, and then the port number is three four four three port number. Okay, uh, slash, and the path. Okay, and the path of the token. Okay, path of the token. So this will be the. Uh, no a url through which you will be able to, okay bar url which is available there okay and so that is how it will help you to provide okay and so right so this is your content server so this is the one mechanism by which you can no uh, create one one uh, where you can no uh, uh, okay uh, where you will be able to no pro, uh, import or no store your uh, uh, bar files which are available there so that is the first method next mechanism is nothing but is your external repository okay so this external repository okay you can you no know, you can deploy multiple bar files which are stored in an external https external https which are available there okay and so on okay 
So you can you know, deploy multiple bar files, okay, which are stored in your external HTTPS repository systems uh, to the integration servers which are available there. Okay, so you need to provide your external HTTP uh, URL where your bar files are available there, where your bar files are available there. Okay, and then you know, and then you can access that particular okay, uh, okay access that. Uh, uh, your integration server will access that particular uh, you uh, bar file and then it will help you to deploy that bar file which are available. Okay, and so on. So that is one. Then comes your custom images. So which means that you can build a custom server runtime image. Okay, you can build a custom server runtime image which are available there. Okay, custom server, okay, uh, custom image which are available there. So you can create custom image. Okay. And then, okay, which contains all your configuration for your integration server, including your bar files and applications that are required. And then you can use this image to deploy an integration server. You are deploying an integration a server which is available there. Okay, and so on. Okay, so by this way, you will be able to, you know, uh, deploy your application. So that particular image, what does the image contain? The image contains all the configurations for your integration server. That is, it contains your bar files and your applications, and then you can make use of this image to deploy an integration server. You're deploying an integration server altogether. Okay, so these are the uh, three mechanisms by which you can uh, deploy, okay, uh, right, deploy your application, deploy your bar files onto the integration server, which is available. Okay, so, so, okay, and so on. So you can you know choose any one of the mechanism okay uh, which is available there in order to deploy okay in order to deploy okay and so on okay uh, so what in high level term what you do you develop a flow uh, so this the, the flow what it does it defines the order and behavior of all the sequence of activities which is going to happen okay and so on. So now what you are doing is when you are developing with designer, you have two choice, two types of flows to create, an event-driven flow and a flow for an API. So using your designer, you can create an event-driven flows, okay, uh, and a flow for an API. That is nothing but it's called as an API flow which is available there, okay, and so on. So when you're talking about this event-driven flows, okay, what happens is you identify an event that occurs. And based on that event uh, which occurs, you trigger the flow to run. You trigger the flow to run, which is nothing but your event driven flow, which is which is available there. Okay, so uh, okay and so on. So that is nothing but okay, uh, right? That is nothing but your event driven flow. Then comes your flow for an API. Okay, so this flow for an API contains a request. Okay, okay. That is, it can be one or more target applications and a response. So it contains a request. One or more actions and a request, okay, and so on. So that is nothing but it's called the flow for a, yeah, no, flow for an API, okay, and so on, right. So what does the request does? The request uses a model, okay, that you define to request the creation, replacement, or retrieval of the data, okay, in your op, in your application request, okay, and so on. So that is what your request. So the flow contains a request. It contains one or more targeted application actions, and also it contains a response. The request uses a model, right? Uh, right? Uh, uh, okay, which defines the request. Okay, uh, that you define to request the creation, replacement, retrieval of data. Okay, and so on. So that is what your model contains. So when the request is submitted, okay, each target application will perform its action. Okay, each target application will perform the actions which is available there. so you make a request the request is based on the model so what does the model do the model will help you to create replace and uh, okay also retrieval of data objects in your application okay so when the request is submitted what is the target application will do the target application okay uh, uh, right uh, performs its action which is available okay and so on performance action okay so once the action is performed, the what that the flow does, the flow will return a response. Return a response. Either it will confirm the action, okay, that the that the actions are successful, or return the data that was requested. The return the data that was requested which is available. That is nothing but it's called as the API flow. So API flow contains a request. It contains the target application actions and uh, it, it, uh, no, it has a uh, no, or contains a response which is available there. So that is nothing but it's called as a flow API, a flows which is available there. Okay, and so on, right. 
so when you're developing your you know, uh, uh, applications with designer okay so you can also make use of your message flows okay uh, okay uh, which is you no know, uh, which is developed using your app connect enterprise tool toolkit which is running on your integration servers which is uh, available there okay and so on right so right uh, you can make use of this iibm integration toolkit such as your know, iibas okay uh, and then no uh, you know develop your application and make it available to the uh, designer flow okay to do a special processing which is available there okay and so on okay uh, okay and also uh, no uh, you can develop a flow in a designer okay uh, so that it calls a message flow okay so that no you will be able to uh, no make use of your smart connectors in order to perform actions on your cloud native application which are available there. so all these things can be done here so that is what your uh, designer flow so uh, typically you know uh, when you develop a flow okay so the flow defines the order and behavior uh, uh, of a sequence of activities right Uh, when developing with designer you have two choices two types of flows to create one is your event driven flows and a flow for a uh, that is api flows that flow for an api which is available there. okay and so on. so that is okay so that is uh, uh, okay so that is nothing but is your this okay and so on okay so after developing your flows after developing your flows okay uh, let's take for example you want to okay you want to deploy your you no know, you de you de you create your application okay you create your flows okay and you want to deploy your uh, no de deploy your applications right so now you can deploy your ibm app connect designer flows and apis to your integration server okay and so on right so that can also be at support which means that if you have authored if, if you have authored or if you have created your flow in your app connect designer Okay, what are the steps you need to perform in order to uh, deploy your flows into your integration servers which are available there? Okay, so let's take for example, you are you no, know, you have developed your flows in your IBM, uh, you no, know, uh, designer. Okay, now you need to deploy the flows in your integration servers. So when you are deploying your flows in your integration servers, which is being authored by your uh, IBM App Connect designer flows. Okay, so first thing what you need to do is you need to export this event driven flow or your api flow as a bar file so first thing you what you need to do is you need to export the event driven flows or your that is api flows okay as a bar file so that is the first step you need to do okay uh, right and so on so usually we do that right okay and then you have to then upload the bar file to the content server server the content server is available in your ibm app connect dashboard okay you have to open your ibm app connect dashboard instance okay and then what you need to do is Uh, after you upload the file to the content, that is bar file to the content. What you need to do is you need to define, okay? You need to define the configurations, okay? Uh, the okay, you need to define the configurations. You need to define the settings, okay? Uh, right, uh, and then you need to define the settings of the bar file, okay? If you need to define the settings. you need to define the configuration of the bar file and then you need to define the settings of your integration server configuration of bar files you need to define the settings of your integration server okay in server and then you need to create the integration server that is what yesterday we did it right so when you want to create an integration server first we export the okay when you want to export the event driven flows or the api flows as a bar file upload the bar file you know, to the content server in your app connect dashboard instance that is what we from your app connect dashboard instance we uploaded the bar file to the content server okay and then what you need to do is you need to define the configuration of bar files you need to define the configuration of bar files you need to define the settings of your integration server that is what we did and then uh, the last step was to uh, create the integration okay create the integration which is available there so that is what we did so this is how you need to deploy 
your app connect designer flows okay and your apis to your integration servers okay uh, okay uh, right so the uh, okay uh, right, uh, to your integration servers and so on okay in the same way you can also deploy your app connect integrate enterprise toolkit to your integration servers which are available there okay and so on uh, okay and so on okay so you can also you know uh, uh, you can deploy your ibm app connect enterprise toolkit integration uh, okay in order to run run your uh, again, create your integration servers and deploy your application onto that particular integration servers which are available there okay so that can also be uh, uh, done okay so so you need to create an integration when you are using an application uh, app connect enterprise toolkit you create your uh, uh, integration server okay and then deploy that uh, no package into your ibm app connect enterprise toolkit okay and so on so you create a bar file after creating the bar file you can deploy it onto the existing uh, tools available okay and so on so uh, right and so on so uh, the bar file which is created using your app connect enterprise toolkit first thing what you need to do is you need to upload it to your app connect dashboard right and then you need to define the configuration of the bar file okay and then you need to define the settings of your integration servers and then you need to create your integration servers to available so okay and then okay and so on so this is what so when your deployment is complete then automatically your integration server is created and started and it starts reading your it starts reading your application you know it starts reading your bar files to run the integrations which are available there. so that is what is all okay all about okay and so on so that is what okay you are okay you can see okay and so on so uh, these are the two you know uh, so either using your you know, uh, when you design your flows using your ibm dashboard sorry uh, designer okay and also toolkit okay you need to upload the files okay you need to upload the files which are available there okay uh, uh, create a bar file export it as a bar file upload the bar files okay uh, uh, then uh, create your configuration settings for your uh, bar file create the configuration set, set, set and then create the define the settings for your uh, integration servers and then you uh, then you create this uh, yeah, integration server okay once the integration server is created and started then it will start reading your bar files which are available there okay and so on right so when you are talking about your configuration settings there are different types of configuration objects can be created okay uh, created yesterday when we are deploying your uh, when you are deploying your application okay what we did is uh, we we never configured that particular type of uh, no uh, 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 settings okay with for your bar files which are available there okay we straight away you know uh, uh, okay uh, skip that particular part and then we moved on to uh, setting up your integration uh, server settings and then created the server which was available there okay and so on so right so there are different types of objects are available there okay and so on so that is related to your integration servers which apply to your integration servers which are available there like for example we have something called as account type accounts type agent a type agent x type okay uh, key store type loop back data source type okay uh, right on um, all those things different configuration types are available there which can be applied to your integration servers which is uh, which can be applied to your integration servers which is available there okay and so on so okay and so on uh, okay so let's say for example you have oh, i'll just give you one or two examples of the configuration types okay so when one we have something called as accounts type okay when one something called as accounts type is available there okay so this accounts type is available there okay, so what is this accounts type this accounts type will help you to create your configuration of objects okay and what this configuration objects contain it contains your account details it contains your account local account details which are available there okay why you can okay so you can make use of this account details in order to establish a connection to the application or api which is referenced in your designer integrations which are referenced in your designer integrations which is available there okay and so on so that can be used so you can provide an account detail this account details will be used in order to uh, right in order to you know connect or in order to connect to your application or apis apis that are referenced in your uh, designer integrations like for example you want to connect your amazon s3 account details you can provide that 
uh, okay or if you want to uh, drop box account details okay all those things which are okay you can uh, provide you can provide it which is available there okay and so on so that is what it can uh, help you to pro uh, help, help you to provide it okay and so on okay so that is nothing but is your account type so likewise no different types of configuration types are available there okay uh, right uh, okay and so on like uh, no, uh, okay so okay so you can ma make use of your agent x type okay so this x type will help you to create a configuration object so which which uh, you know uh, okay and so on configuration object right so this will help you to deploy your integration server which requires you to connect your a callable flows run okay uh, it will or it will help you to run your callable uh, callable flows which are available there so likewise you now these are the, some of the configuration types which are available there which you can you know uh, make use of it and configure your integration servers which are uh, okay and so on so and so on and also the next is you can set the settings of your uh, integration servers which is available there okay and so on. so that can also be done right so uh, all right once you have deployed your integration servers okay so yesterday we were deploying your integration server version 12 okay after it is deployed version 12 if you want to change the versions yes you can also change the versions which are available there okay so so from your app connect dashboard okay you you know click on the three dots which is available in your integration server and under that you have an option called as change no change uh, no change versions and then you can change the versions which are available there okay and so on so that can also be done here okay and so on. so all these things can be done okay which is available there. so you, uh, after your uh, after your settings uh, uh, after after you have you know deployed it you can change the settings you can edit the settings you can manage the bar files you can delete an integration server which is available there okay you can manage the trace okay you can no you can manage the trace which are available there which means that uh, the, uh, okay when you are, if you have uh, no uh, most of your work in uh, integra app integration force there are two types of tra traces are available there the one is called as user trace okay and then other one is nothing but is called as a service trace right so these are the two types of traces are available there okay and so on okay so uh, right so this uh, user trace will help you to debug your integration solution okay and so on so Uh, no so you can trace your integration servers and also the, the deployed message flows which are available there okay and so on right so okay so you can okay so that is nothing but is your you no know, user trace so user trace will help you to debug integration solutions okay right uh, that is you can trace your in servers and you can trace your message flows deployed message flow so that is what your user trace will help you to do okay and then we have your service trace service trace uh, 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 okay uh, uh, right uh, when you receive okay, you can use the service trace when you receive an error message okay and that uh, okay and it instructs you or, or okay or or it is been instructed by your ibm support people okay ibm support people and so on so this will help you to trace track okay all the necessary you no know, flows which are available within your integration server which is available there okay and so on, okay and when you enable this user the trace and service trace okay so adds additional processing occurs okay within your integration server okay and so on right uh, right so that which means that it might you know affect on the performance of your traces okay and so on so you can enable and stop your uh, traces which is available there okay and so on so you can delete your delete an integration server right uh, so, okay from your integration server click on the three dots which are available there that is your option menu and then you can click on the delete option that will help you to delete your integration servers which are available there okay and then you can also manage your bar files okay and so on you can know uh, uh, so that you can maintain the set of bar files which are stored in your content server okay so all those things can be you no know, can be done there okay and so on uh, right and so on so right so that the, all those things can be done there okay and so on so uh, that that can also be done so where you can you no know, manage all the bar files you can take a backup of the bar files if you want to restore the bar files if you want to import the bar files all those things can be done okay uh, right can be done okay from your uh, okay uh, from your app connect dashboard which is available there okay and so on. uh
Okay. Now, uh, let's say for example, uh, if you if you're in a uh, if you want to you know create this particular app connect you know configuration uh, onto another namespace. Okay. Or if you want to copy this uh, configuration objects from uh, one namespace or cluster to or uh, one namespace or one cluster to another cluster or for disaster recovery which is available there. Okay, and so on, right? So, right, so they have, you know, uh, you know, you know uh, there is a script, okay? You know, uh, you, there is a script is available there which will help you to back up your, you know, back up and restore your configs which are available there, okay? Back up and restore your configs of your integration servers which are available there, okay? So you have an app connect, okay, you have an app connect dashboard instance and you want to copy that particular app connect or you know, back up your app connect dashboard instance and then you want to restore it on, restore it onto your disaster recovery, then you have, a, you, know, you have this particular, uh, what you call as uh, your, uh, okay. Uh, Your script is available there. You can download that script, which is available there. Okay, and so on. Okay, and so on. So right. So so let's say for the script name is nothing but it's called as a backup hyphen add and hyphen restore config dot zip file, which is available there. Okay, and so on. That zip file is available. Okay, and so on. So, right, you can extract this particular uh, no, zip file, and then when you extract this particular zip file, okay, you will be able to, you know, uh, no, uh, no, use the, uh, you, you, you uh, know, back up your file and then restore your file which are available. So all the things can be done here. Okay, and so on. So, you have a, okay, uh, you have something for us, okay, within this particular zip file. You have something called as backup uh, configs.sh script is there. You run that script, and this script is supported on your uh, Linux and Mac OS system only. Okay, and so on. Okay, and so on. So, uh, uh, okay, uh, that is also okay uh, uh, available there. Okay, uh, let me check if I'm able to, if I can download that particular script here and show it to you. Okay, so this is your backup and uh, restore config which is available. When you download it, you have this particular folder. Within that, you have backup config.sh file, right? So you can run this particular file on Linux and Mac OS in order to backup your integration, okay, dashboard instance. If you want to backup your app connect in dashboard instances, you can do that. And if you want to, what do you call this, if you want to restore it, just read through, go through this particular readme file, okay, and uh, no, you, you will be able to, no, restore that particular file so how to restore okay so in order to restore your configuration from the backup file so what you need to do okay so do that okay so okay uh, these are the steps which are available there so that you can you know uh, restore it your configuration from your backup file which is available there. okay and so on so that is what you can so either you if you want to move this particular in integration instance from one and uh, what you call as from uh, no one namespace to another namespace or one cluster to another cluster or okay, or you can make or to uh, or for a disaster recovery, you can make use of this particular option which are available. So that is nothing but is your app connect enterprise which is there. Okay, and so on. So that is what will help you to do. Okay, and so on. So you can develop your applications. Okay, you can develop your uh, applications which is available there. Okay, and so on. So a completing flow in uh, uh, no. When you want to com a complete flow involves the following three high level steps: connect, configure. And uh, and map them, connect, configure and map them. Which is available. Okay, and so on. Okay, 
so connect okay uh, right so you can create a flow by using your pre built uh, template which are available there or you can improve import a flow okay from a uh, no, definition file and then you can validate and uh, no, uh, okay so before importing your uh, no, file so it be sure that you validate that particular file okay and understand the behavior of the flow which is available there or you can create it from no uh, from scratch you can create it from scratch which is available there okay and so on so okay so that is how you can create a flow you can create a flow using your pre built template or you can import or you can create a new flow from scratch when you're talking about importing a flow first you need to validate that particular uh, flow definition file and understand the behavior of your flow definition file before you you know make use of it okay or you can create it from flow from scratch okay so when you okay so what is okay when uh, when the flow is created okay uh, the flow involves the following three sim uh, no uh, simple steps connect configure and map okay so connect is nothing but connect each application and api used in the flow which is available there okay so okay so you, okay so for the flow to pass the data between your applications and api you must you know, connect your app connect to each api okay to each application which is used in the flow which is available there okay and so on so you can have multiple accounts you know connected to each application or api that can be done which is available there right then configure after creating a file after creating a flow you need to configure the behavior of the events and actions okay and so on that is you need to configure any logic or other tools used in the flow which is available there okay and so on right so okay and so on so that is nothing but is your is nothing but is your configure which are available there and then the last one is your mapping okay and uh, okay uh, mapping so uh, if you want an action uh, to use the data okay from the events or from an action of earlier flow then you can map the feeds okay of your events all those things can be done which is available there okay and so right so that is that is nothing but okay okay uh, okay or uh, okay uh, uh this is nothing but is your mapping stuff okay so when you create or when you edit or import event driven flows or api flows this app connect automatically validates each of the applications or no okay uh, or node in the flow which is available there, okay if the validation errors are de uh, detected a warning icon is displayed on any nodes that require your attention which are available there. so this is Okay, that is what it helps you to do. So it helps you to, uh, no, uh, provide you with a warning. Okay, it helps you to provide with a warning which is available there. Okay, and so on. So right, you can after that you can troubleshoot. Okay, your flows. Okay, either in your IBM App Connect that is IBM on IBM Cloud. Okay, and all those things can be done. Okay, and then you can also export a flow. Okay, flow definition file. Okay, you can import into another instance of your App Connect. So all those things can be done. So you can export and also you can share your flows uh, with other members which are who are available there. So that can also be done here. Okay, and that is nothing but your development. Okay, and so on. So how to export and import your flow? Okay, in order to export and import your flows, okay, uh, in your app connect designer, okay, so that you are able to share the flows with the users, okay, who are you no know, who want to. Uh, uh, use that particular flow okay and so on within their you know integration solutions which are available there okay so you can export the flow using your design time flow asset that is as a yaml file okay runtime flow asset as a bar file or open api version 3 yaml file or runtime flow bar asset file which is available there open api version 3 yaml or open api version 3 json and the last one is open api version 2 swagger document yaml file or open api swagger document uh, version 2 json file which is available there okay and okay and so on so these are the uh, different options by which you can export and import your uh, files which are available there okay export and then you can you know uh, uh, okay uh, okay and import the files which are available there. okay and so on okay any any clarification on this Okay, so the last three flows that is that is exporting a flow that is last three that is uh, no uh, 
what you call as a CDE. Okay, these flows. Okay, these options will be displayed only for API flows. Okay, so these options will be displayed only for API flows which are available. Okay, so so how to create your uh, flows? You can create from uh, uh, scratch. Okay, from an asset in the IBM Automation Foundation assets. Okay, what is an automation foundation assets where you are able to uh, store your flows? Okay, right, and then so that no other users can access that particular flow and make use of that particular flow or okay from that particular asset, or you can export and import across your IBM App Connect designer instances. Okay, so okay, the flows which are created using your designer instances you can export and import across to different type of different App Connect designer instances. And the fourth fourth one is export and import across App Connect on IBM Cloud and App Connect designers which are available. So this is how you can. These are the different methods by which you can create your okay uh, your you know uh, designer flows which are available. There, okay and so on. So you can in export and import across App Connect designer instance. That is you can import as a flow. That is your YAML file from any App Connect designer instance in a cluster. Okay. Uh, okay, or okay, to into into your designer instance, App Connect designer instances which are available. There, okay, right. So that can also be done. There, okay, and so on. So you can export a flow as a YAML file. Okay, all those things can be done. Export and import it to your App Connected designer instances which are available. There, okay, and so on. Okay, and then you can provide an auto scaling. Okay, for your uh, uh, okay integration server flows. Okay. So you can provide a vertical pod scaling, okay, and also you can configure a horizontal pod scaling, which is available there. Okay, so when you're talking about vertical pod scaler, it will help you to automate the process of setting your resource limits and request request for the pods in a cluster. That is, you are defining the minimum and maximum CPU and memory limits for a pod container. You are defining your memory minimum and a uh minimum and a maximum cpu or memory limits which is available there so that is nothing but is your uh, uh okay uh, okay your uh, vertical pod auto scaling which is available there okay and so on okay so now what happens here is when you set up okay uh, okay, when you configure your, uh, you know, uh, when you configure your auto scaling for your integration server, okay. So you, okay, if you want to scale, uh, no, uh, configure it, you are deploying your uh, VPA, that is vertical pod auto scaler. Okay. So what is vertical pod auto scaler does is you are defining a minimum and maximum CPU and memory limits for the pod containers. You are defining it. Okay. So and also you are defining and policy. Okay, so that now you can automatically modify your resource requests which are available there. Okay, so when you're deploying a vertical pod auto scaler for your app connect designer, uh, app connect, okay, uh, right, uh, or your, your integration server, you're doing these things. You are defining your minimum and maximum CPU and memory limits. Second thing is you are defining a policy that will help you to automatically modify the resources which is available there. Okay, so once this is deployed, what will happen is the VPA, that is Vertical Pod Auto Scaler, will monitor the CPU and the memory usages. Okay, it will monitor the CPU and memory usages. Okay, and then it will generate a recommendation so that it can be applied onto the integration server pods. Which means that it will help you to dynamically scale up or scale down your CPU and memory limits as required. That is nothing but is your Vertical Pod auto scaler which is available there okay then comes your horizontal pod auto scaler okay so this horizontal pod auto scaler okay uh, right uh, what it does is it uses the metrics which are collected from pods okay the, okay so this pod auto scaler will collect the metrics from the pod okay so that it will help you to automatically scale a replication controller or your deployment configuration which is available so it will automatically scale your replication controller and also your deployment configuration which is available there okay and so on so that is nothing but is your horizontal pod auto scaler which is available there okay and so on so now what this horizontal pod auto scaler will do is it will query the cpu utilization for the pod at regular intervals okay 
at regular intervals, it will start, you know, uh, querying your CPU utilization metric, okay, and okay, and so on. And then, you know, based on that particular thing, it will help you to scale up or scale down your pods which are available there. Okay, how does this scale up and scale down your pod? When you are, you know, when you are creating your horizontal pod auto scaler resources, you define the minimum and the maximum number of running pods on the deployment. Okay, and the uh, okay, and the CPU utilization that the pod should target. Okay, and so on. If the CPU utilization is higher, then the horizontal pod scaler will automatically scale up that particular pod. Okay, and so on. Likewise, so it will help you to do that. So, so this that is what you have to configure. So you need to configure the minimum and the maximum number of running pods. Okay, okay, and then the CPU utilization that your pod should target. Okay, and so on. So after you deploy your horizontal pod autoscaler, okay, what this autoscaler will do is it will query the CPU utilization metric, okay, at regular intervals, okay, and then it will calculate the utilization, okay, and then it will help you to dynamically add or remove based on the resource utilization, based on the current user utilization which is available. There. So that is nothing but is called as a horizontal pod auto scaler horizontal pod auto scaler which is available there. okay and so on. okay any any clarification so most of the things this is we saw toolkit right so uh, it is a uh, used for advanced enterprise for designing and developing your integration phase so you can create your rest api services uh, pub sub events all those things can be done okay so you can also transform and mediate, okay? You can, you know, all these things are provided here. You can transform your data from one data, data map the data, okay? You can make use of your graphical data mapper in order to map your data, or you can write your code in variety of languages like C++, .NET, Java language, etc. All these things can be made use of this, which is our available there, okay? So IBM App Connect, you know, uh, on your IBM Cloud Platform integration provides one unified dis uh, dashboard where you can view and monitor the health of health of your uh, no, uh, no, uh, integrations which are available there okay so it is a lightweight dashboard that can now securely communicate with multiple deployment location okay and so on so this will help you to view deployment on on premises public private public multi cloud okay all those things can be done okay all those things it helps you to provide perform health checks problem determination troubleshooting across deployments all those things can be provided with the help of this one unified dashboard which is available there, okay, and so on. And also it helps you to provide end-to-end -end DevOps automation, okay, and so on. End-to-end -end DevOps automation, it helps you to provide, okay, and so on. So uh, this IBM App Connects pro pro provides you with, you know, a different uh, set of APIs. It provides you, you know, command line interface, you know, which will help you to, you know, uh, uh, control your integration lifecycle, Okay, including your development, deployment, and administration of your integration service, which are available there. Okay, so with this IBM App Connect Enterprise, we have some you know, new command line utility. That that command line utility is nothing but is called as a IBM Int command line utility, which is available there. Okay, and so on, right? So this IBM, okay, Int command, okay, will help you to build source to serve to server to serve the pipeline which is available there. okay so that is what your ibm you know int will help you to do okay so that is your ibm command uh, command line interface which is available there ibm int okay client okay which is available there. okay and so on so it will help you to integrate okay your uh, okay uh, and all those things can be done with the help of this particular okay ibm int which is available there ibm int is nothing but IBM integration, okay, command line tool which is available there, okay, and so on. So, uh, this integration is supported on Windows, Linux, okay, AIX, IBM ZOS, okay, it, is, it all supports there, okay, it helps you to uh, support. So, which means that you can package, you can optimize your server, you can package your, you know, uh, package your resources, okay? All those things can be, uh, you know, uh, okay, is available there. So, uh, you should have the, uh, 
if you want to make use of this command then you should have you know integration you know app connect enterprise uh, uh, version 12 okay version 12 in that you can make use of this particular commands which are available so you can package your bar file you can start your nodes stop your nodes okay all those things can be done from this particular with this particular command which is available okay and so on now this is your uh, evolution of your ibm integration bus which is available okay and so on right so right so you earlier uh, earlier to your ibm app connect enterprise we had this IBM integration bus. We had this IBM integration bus, okay, and so on. So in this IBM integration bus, require needed an IBM integration node. So this was your IBM integration node. It requires an IBM integration node, okay, All right, okay, or it is also called as a broker. In older versions of, you no, know, like message broker or IBM integration bus, uh, integration bus, we need an integration node, okay, or it is called as a broker in older versions, like in message brokers and so on. So this, integration node what it does is it looks after the set of integration servers which are created so this is a, a set of integration servers and this integration nodes look after this these sets of integration servers which are available there okay and so on okay so these integration servers are nothing but okay it is are nothing but are called as an execution groups okay right okay and so on so it, it it's a okay this is nothing but it's called as an execution nodes which are available there okay so earlier versions of your you know integration bus and nodes we need both the integration nodes and your integration servers and then you need to configure them so that they know okay about one another they know about one another which is available there okay and so on right and so on then you need to configure your integration node to perform the uh, load balancing across your integration servers okay okay all those things can be done with the help of okay and so on that is the uh, topology of your integration bus which is available there okay and so on when you're talking about this app connect and enterprise okay when you're talking about this app connect topology which is available there okay so there is no need for an integration node when running in a containerized deployment when in a containerized deployment which is available there okay there's no need of it you can just unzip okay and then start your okay servers okay unzip and go okay and so on. it is that uh, that much easier which is available there okay so if you look here your uh, uh, admin web ui runs within your integration node okay and here your admin ui runs within your integration service which is available there so that is the uh, that is the you know, uh, evolution of iib to acu so this will help you to move your applications down to the cloud much easier okay and so on right okay uh, okay for provide containerization okay this particular ACE can be deployed onto a container or also can be deployed onto a physical or a virtual machine which are available there. Okay, and so on. So that is nothing but it's your evolution of IIB to your uh, what you call as uh, 